Happy Saturday, everybody. You're welcome to the Today's Woman Show. My name is Renee Q. Boating, and today is going to be so exciting. I have a very lovely winning woman on, and you'll see her soon. We'll be right back. It's time for the woman on the move. She's a female entrepreneur, extremely hardworking, a go-getter. Let's see who she is. From prehistoric cave paintings to modern day film, art serves as a vessel for storytelling and conveying humankind's relationship with its environment. In the case of 32-year-old Esther Fusu, she was contacted by the Methodist Presbyterian Unit Chapel, Vota Barracks, to construct a concrete pulpit for the church. After the project, she was paid 6,000 CDs for her work, that further pushed her to put in her all and commercialize her works. I feel like my artwork is me, yeah. And me being African, it basically comes out through that form. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, lucrative in such a, in, in the sense that if you have people coming to tell you that, okay I want this out to work do this for me do, do that for me that's when it becomes lucrative but if you sort of come out with your own thing and then you do your work and which has your own meaning is it's not really uh, yeah. she currently teaches visual arts at St George Grammar Senior High School and distance education at the University of Ghana Legon. In order to change that narrative, what um, I do these days is that when the clients come around and they are like, okay, I want something to hang in my sitting room, I'm like, okay, it's not just anything, but what do you want to say? What you are going to hang in your sitting room should be able to say something. Should be, should be able to have something in connection with you. So with that kind of um, suggestion, I. I was able to get one or two people who were able to do artworks that say something about themselves or about an issue in their, in their life. One current example has to do with a client that I had. He was like, um, he wants an artwork that talks about X-ray because it's the nickname. He gave me the history behind his nickname, so it's kind of yeah, changing that narrative of just giving art to people as and so where we are currently standing is a car garage and uh, Esther has converted this into a personal studio. So everything happens here. You can call it the magic room. So you can see some of the words that she uses for her words and it tells you how passionate she is about art. For Esther, she has never regretted venturing into the art despite its low appreciation. Sometimes because people are like, oh, she's a woman and they are like, okay, is she, is she going to do it? They try to judge your competence or something. Sort of. um, I had one experience where I had to send, he wanted a drawing and I, I had to send samples of drawings more than five or six times to him and he was like saying again and all those stuff. So they tend to doubt your competence if they see that you are a woman and you are venturing into um, a man's world. So this very work we are you know, working on mm -hmm. is meant for Chaluwete, one of the greatest art festivals in Ghana mm -hmm. and it's slated for August at Jamestown and so this very piece here is going to be exhibited in August at Chaluwete. Business she says is seasonal but on good days she cashes in more particularly from Westerners who mostly request for abstract works. It's a bit difficult. Um, a bit difficult is that in the sense that it's not about producing the work. Yeah, you can get capital to start the work, but one other problem is how to do with uh, um, advertisement, how to ad advertise your business. Because when I, it was when I was doing the work for the, my first work that somebody was like, oh, okay, so do we have somebody like this in whole, you know, and like, oh, I'm surprised. So it's like, it has to do with the advert for the business you establish. But the, your, it all depends on your ability to advert for, um, for you to get more clients. In a world where social media is offering convenience to businesses and the likes, Esther tells me she never leaves it to chance. I have a, a, a platform on social media, basically Facebook, uh, where I post some of these works. And then I also attach the meanings to the work. Sometimes I share my work with friends. Sometimes I place it on my status on WhatsApp. Sometimes I work a lot with these ones, for instance, that you see on the wall. 
I do them alone, but when it has to do with site specific work, uh, where I'll have to go and do the work, amount of work, and the work is very huge, then I call for people to help me. Yeah. I have one or two friends that come in to help me. She advises Ghanaians not to relent in inquiring about meanings of art as they are mostly abstract in concept. You can have everything, but without passion, Esther stresses, anything you set your mind to do will be in vain. Art is a magical thing. Sometimes it requires a third eye to grasp these concepts. But one thing Esther is asking from government is that they need an art museum where they can showcase their works or even hold exhibitions because the private ones are very expensive. That will, in a way, promote art in Ghana and also make people appreciate art. And so we kept you from Esther's studio here at Tantra Hill. This is where she does everything here, her magic room. It's been so great and awesome. And thanks for watching. My name is Josh Quinning. I'm black and proud. <laughs> yeah, it has to do it. You know, people try to fancy. I know. I know, I know. Our winning woman for today is Barbara Mante. She's the founder of Kitchen Hat Foods. And I'm so, so, so proud of her. It's like my, 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 my heart is just bursting with pride. Aww. Congratulations. Thank let you me, so much, Renee. Barbie's like my, I call her Barbie. She's like my little sister. Okay, I'll tell you a little bit about her. I met her how many years ago? When did you get married? 2010. 20 years. Well, that's nine years. Yeah. Oh, wow. So nine years ago, I was a makeup artist for her, for her wedding. <laughs> and I thought, oh, my goodness, who is this lovely, lovely lady? And after she got in touch with me and she said, oh, she really loved how I made her up. She looked so natural. She was just glowing. So I taught her makeup and she became a professional makeup artist. And she became like my, I mean, I would give her all my jobs, everything. And I can't tell you how hardworking and determined this young lady is and today she is the wedding woman because she's even moved on to something else and she'll tell us about it so congratulations again thank this you this is a so great much. opportunity for me to say that i'm ever so proud of you thank you so yes, much yes Renee. yes i'm so so proud of you well done so tell us a bit about your journey i know you went to 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 Legon, university of ghana right and you studied sociology so what was right. your plan because 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 if you heard what i said yeah from makeup artistry and everything to food so tell us the journey um, so in um, 2004, I was in the University of Ghana studying sociology, graduated in 2008, but in my heart of hearts, I really wanted to be an architect. Really? I liked all things nice. <laughs> I liked home, I liked interiors, I just loved architecture, mm -hmm. but I couldn't get into KNUSC and one of the things I also love is customer service. Mm. So when I got the opportunity to do my national service in Fidelity Bank, I was at the customer service department okay. and it was a learning experience for me. I just loved it. For me, it wasn't going to work. I, I just you love to it. serve the people. And uh, I must say I did pretty well um, at that post, but, um, I wasn't retained. <clears throat> so after that, I met my husband, we got married, and the plan was to relocate. And um, I got you to do my makeup for me. It was so nice. And so um, when the plan changed from relocating to London, that was where he was initially based, mm -hmm. to now stay in Ghana, I was like, okay go into makeup artistry okay. and I I just 
I would say I'm just creative okay. or artistic. So, so what's so, about the color? So that's what it is. Yes. So you just love like the the art, the yes. the, the, the creativity. Yes. It of just came naturally to me. Okay. So and you're one of my best students, I must say, because <laughs> Thank you. I mean the plan was I I, I, I taught over a hundred um, young ladies right. makeup artistry, right. and the plan wasn't to keep them as my workers, yeah. but was to empower them to move on. Right. But any time that I got jobs that I couldn't do in certain areas, I find out which of my students are in those areas, and then I give them those, and I was giving you all the jobs. I know. It was Thank like you, you and. You know, um, um, you know, a couple of other, other people. young ladies yes. were also very, very good. Yes. But you were getting almost all of them. I know, I know. I, 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 I think that when, like, with a job like makeup artistry, you can't just take the craft and leave the professionalism or customer service bit out. If you want to do well, if you want to be out there, if you want to be the best, you need to combine all of it. Mm -hmm. And that is what you taught us. And I had bits of that. So mm. I, it, it just all together was beautiful. So I know you opened a salon as well. You had a right. hair beauty salon. Right. Okay. So um, I think after a while and um, working mobile, I decided to put together a studio. So I had a hair studio and a an, um, makeup studio. And I did that for about two to three years. I trained also to do hair. So um, it was very good. I trained a lot of people to and we also specialized in bridal like you thought me. And after a while, I got an idea to go into food processing. I wanted to leave the work for my workers, the stuff that I had in the beauty space. But for me, it wasn't going as I had planned it. The idea was that go and set up a food processing company. How did that come in though? Because, I mean, of course, you're a wife, right. you're, you're a mother, so you're cooking and all right. of that. But was it that you loved food so much that you thought, and not as in love, like loved eating, yeah. but <laughs> which is not a bad thing anyway. <laughs> but was it that you, you loved cooking so much? So what happened was that I had, in 2016, I had just had my third child. And so from the hospital, you would move to your mom's so she can help you out. And then I said to my mom, you know what, this is my third child. I know what to do with the baby. So I'm going to be with you for just a month and then I'm out. Then she's like, oh no, wait a while. It's like, um, okay, if you want to go early, this is my advice. When you go, eat the right foods, like palm nut soup, and then... Apparently that is good for breast, yes, breast for, milk. Yes, for breast milk production. Mm -hmm. And then the baby will grow well. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, but I don't like what's already existing on the market. Mm -hmm. So um, what's the plan? Then she says, you can call me when you need fresh palm nuts. We either cook for you or get something sorted for you and bring it to you. I was like, okay, let's see. So that was how the conversation started with my mom and then Kitchen Heart Foods was birthed. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. So, so, what, so you were saying that you were leaving, the, you planned to leave Right. The, the, the hair salon for right. your workers. Yes. So I plan to leave the <laughs> hair salon for my workers um, with the hopes that the training on, on hair, on makeup and customer service, they can handle it and still keep the business running. But after a while, after a few years, I just realized that it wasn't doing too well or as I had expected it to be in my absence so I and how how did you know that from the with the fans that you were, you were generating or was it from complaints from clients or what was so what was yes it uh, my that? absence affected the fans and to um for me customer service is everything mm -hmm. i don't know why um even after you train stuff sometimes it's still hard for them you know to to just imbibe that kind of work ethic in them. So for me, I wasn't getting 100% of that. And so the decision was one, to close it down, keep a good reputation, and then when you're ready to come back to pick it up from where you left it, it's easy to get the client back. Yes. You go back to your yes. books, 
Because they'll even be missing you exactly. anyway. Exactly. They'll be wanting you. Exactly. Yeah. Or let the workers handle it and it's not too good and you lose your client and you're trying to get them and everybody's scattered. So I d decided to go with option one. Right. Close it right. temporarily. Right. And then... So this was like a yes. business decision. Yes. It wasn't anything emotional. Not at all. Because sometimes we make business decisions right. with like, you know, our emotions and that could be wrong. Sometimes, because you love something so yes. much, but if it's not doing well, yes. you know, you really, really need to be like focused and, and, and to, to I mean, have a plan. After, after it was closed, I mean, it's been years, but I still get clients that will call me. And in the beginning, from the time I closed till over a year, I was still taking work on referrals from past brights and then people still bringing in their wigs. If your salon is closed and I can't walk in, can you still fix my wig? <laughs> so I was working from home and still trying to set up the new business on the side. Right. So would you say Kitchen Hard Foods is a better business? And are you enjoying it? And what, what do you do? I know you do the palm nut, the right. easy palm nut, and yes. the turkey berry. Yes. Actually, you taught me the turkey berry. I didn't know what it was called. A lot of people do. Yes, didn't yes, know I didn't know. I didn't know. So, turkey berry, if you don't know, tell them. So, turkey <laughs> berry is what we call quon susa or abedru. Yes. Which is really, really healthy in our diet. Yes. So, it's a little tiny green. green like yes. peas. Yeah, like green peas. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. So, um, so after I spoke with my mom and moved back home, then I started putting in the work. And I would produce it, take it to church, sell it to friends, just to get feedback. Mm -hmm. And for me, the feedback was more important because, because some of them I was giving it out for free, almost all the things, all the palm nut that I produced, because that was what I started mm -hmm. with. Because... I so you're just producing wanted to, and packaging. Yes, and packaging it. I just wanted to get it right. I'm a bit of a per perfectionist, so um, I did that for over six months to get it right. And then, so when you're getting feedback from I was them, as you feedback okay. from friends and family, mm -hmm. mostly selling in church. Then they would tell others, and people would call me, and that was when I knew that everybody loves it. So um, you know, make a move. Right. Make a move. And everybody now is thinking healthy living, healthy lifestyle, healthy eating. So this palm nut concentrate or extract is all natural, no preservatives. At the moment, you're the only one doing that on the market. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. because I mean, before I was buying, you know, I was buying some, but buy like the tin yes you know the the, the yes. canned ones right until I, I i right so it's actually no preservative at all no preservative so how can you at keep all. it that long so easy palm nut concentrate is fda certified and um ours is different because it's all natural so the only preservation method is that it must be kept frozen okay so once it's frozen the shelf life will last you up to a year Okay, that's right. fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. And this you can even uh, send, you know, send abroad. abroad and all right that. now, the demand all across the world is to get easy palm nut. I have people here in Ghana who would refer, um, tell their friends about it or family abroad. And uh, I can tell you <laughs> that the number of inquiries and messages we get on a daily basis to ship these products abroad but we haven't been able to do that yet. So now we get um, somebody take a maximum of 10 pieces, one weighing 2 kg. Wow, that's, so oh that's, my goodness, that's yes, almost like the, what, yes. 20 kilos? 20 kilos abroad from Dubai to Cyprus to the US. They've carried all of it by themselves. We're just hoping that the next phase is to be able to ship container loads of easy so, palm So Bobby, Bobby, what I'm wondering, products. I mean, because even as, as you know, you know, a, a woman who cooks. I mean, right. that, that whole process, it takes a while right. to cook the palm nut for, I don't know how yes. long, you have to cook it for a yes. long time, and then to pound it yes. and all of that. So how are you able to do, I don't know how many, because the demand you said already is, is you've got a huge demand right. for it. How are you able to do all of that and then manage your children, manage your marriage, you're a married woman, you know, mar you, know you manage yourself. So how are you able to balance it? So um, as a support system, I have a very supportive husband. He's very hands-on. 
Um, my mom is also there. She helps me a whole lot. So it's also very difficult for me to leave the work for my workers because of the way I am. I want to be involved from start to finish. Mm. So I'm always there, really hands-on, but sometimes you need to delegate. Have you, have you built a factory? So we have a small factory we work from. Okay. But it could get better because mm. we are adding on more products. That's fantastic. We need uh, a much bigger space wow. to operate. From. So what do you think your 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 what are your plans? And when you look at even the food industry right. in Ghana, you know this is something that you probably should <laughs> you know because so many people are using. Um, I don't want to call it junk food. Right. Um, what, would, what would be the best the best way to put it? But like, you know, easy process. Right. You know, just quick, 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 so right. they can just do this. But right now, we're, we're, we have to eat well to, to, to live to well. To live well. You know, to, to be healthy and all that. So what word would you probably give to mothers out there, to women out there, to wives out there, even men? Some men love the Today's Women yeah. show. You know, so what advice would you just give to them on eating well to live well? So I think... I think for anybody or a family that um, wants to live well, you must plan ahead. Mm. Um, I take time off to go to the market, to go grocery shopping, and now we must be able to read labels, the labels or on food packages. We must be able to read it, know the carbohydrate contents, know if it's filled with MSG, know uh -huh. um, if there are no preservatives or if it's gluten-free. So plan ahead and then just make time and cook. And with products like um, my products, Easy Palm Nuts, and other food um, products that are all natural and no preservatives, that has come in to ease the hassle and time spent in the kitchen, because we want to spend very limited time in the kitchen and go out there and make money. These right. products... Um, once you taste it, once you experience that you have that cooking experience in the kitchen and you love it, just go out there, get it, and store them, and right. store them, and make food in bits. I mean, if it's certified by, by the Food and Drugs Board and you store it and you know the shelf And what was that process be, like? It's very tedious, but there's a good and bad aspect to it. It's good because um, the cu consuming customer out there knows sure. that what they are buying, yeah. you know, they are getting their money's worth, it's healthy. Right, and Which is very you know, important. Yeah, healthy, yes. uh, you know, access. But the downside is that it takes a long time, and that's why there are lots of products on the market, um, even original products produced by um, individuals, yet they would want to um, not go through the food and drugs process um, testing. And is that legal? It's not. It's okay. not, or even individuals that would find out that a product is doing well and want to imitate. Mm. Yeah. So that's one thing we should also look out yes. for, ladies. You know, when we are buying, we have to check, just make sure it's been certified, certified. so that yeah. you know that you're eating the right thing. Right. I can't say it again, Barbie. I'm so, so, so proud Thank of you. Thank you so much. I really. mean, next thing, I don't know what you'll be doing, you know, the, but I need to ask you this, okay? Yeah. Um, did you, th I mean, of course, from, from from when I met you to right. when you started makeup artistry and all of that, did you ever foresee yourself doing food? I didn't. And I must say that um, my friends encouraged me a lot. I'm always cooking. I don't know why, but anytime the fridge is empty, <laughs> I'm just not happy. I need to stock up because I don't know when I'll be out. So once I have food stocked up, uh, I can move the kids to my mom and sometimes I add food and my mom is like I'm here why are you adding food but that's me so my friends encouraged me a lot anytime somebody passes by my house and you serve them a meal the reviews let me quickly <laughs> ask you this so what do you think about you know um, people who you know sort of uh, uh, um, put together five-year plan ahead ten-year plan ahead you know they actually plan ahead what do you think about that? It's, it's really good. Um, the ideas will come. I always write it down. I always, always write it down. Three years, five year plan. Inspiration. Um, issues of life. Mm. They will follow. The inspiration might make you follow through it 
or the issues of life will give you a detour. Yeah. So whichever way, once it's positive, just write it down and follow through. And passion. Don't follow something because it's the in thing, it's making money because or others you think have said it's making money. Or yes. you think it's making yes. money. So do it with passion. If you do it with passion, it doesn't feel like work. And even if it's so tiring, you go to work and you feel fulfilled at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. And I think one thing I probably want to add to that is not to actually put yourself in a box. Because some people will put a five-year plan and even when they are halfway through and they are being led and inspired to, to do something, something that else. is probably really what is their purpose and what will give yes. them that huge breakthrough. Yes. It's just like, this is not according to my plan. So exactly. I won't and, and, and that that is what Because really... food processing and production is not easy at all. Sometimes I'm so tired and I ask God, I'm so tired. I tell him, I'm so tired. I don't know how I got here, but I'm already here. So please just help me. So your confidence <laughs> is in him and he Absolutely. is your strength. Absolutely. Congratulations Thank again. You so we'll be much. right back. Thank you so much for coming on the Today's Woman Show today. Barbara, it's been an awesome time with you. Thank and you. you've got a special gift here Aww. from one of my amazing sponsors, Yaz. They produce the Yaz Sanitary Pad. And they are one of our sponsors. They make this show happen Thank to inspire so women out there. So they've brought this gift for you. So just different all kinds of things. You've got two brushes in there. You've got your panty liners. You've got your pad. There's so many things. You could even give some as gifts just to say thank you so much. And I have a special gift for you. Mm. So what I'm doing now, I am pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing. I'm encouraging women to love themselves. It's all about loving yourself and being confident to be able to come out and do what you're doing. So I have the Renee Q Love Pillow. Aww. And this is a special one for you. Thank and you basically, so it's just to encourage women to, and also to remind women to love themselves. Right. So this is a gift for you to put maybe on your pillow or somewhere, I don't know. But every time you see it, I want you to tell yourself something you love about you. Right. Okay, so this is from me to you. And I want you to tell me one thing, tell everybody one thing you love about you. I love that I can multitask. I do it so effortlessly. And it's by the grace of God. Thank yeah. you so much. That, that's, that's awesome. And I wish you all the very best. Thank, Thank you so you. much. And we'll be seeing you very soon. We'll be right back. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Today's Woman Show. I had an awesome time. I hope you were inspired. Don't miss it next week, Saturday, 11 a.m. on TV3 and on DSTV as well, channel 279. Thank you so much to my sponsors, to GTP, to Yas yeah Sanitary Towel, to Rene Q Love Pillow. And today we shot at the Rene Q Pestle Branding Studio. Thank you so much and we'll see you next week. Stay blessed.